So the drawers I have here, in this one here, the first one, I mostly have RC stuff. And they are laid all over the place. With that said, on the top here I have all the miscellaneous small stuff like meters or propellers or ESC and stuff like that since I built it. On the bottom here I actually have, so I can have drawers like that. And this one works pretty decent since I have these boxes. But if we take a look at the other one. As you can see it's jam packed with different stuffs in different bags and containers. We need to make something about it. To build this cabinet I will be using three types of wood. First of all I will be using this construction plywood. It's 12 millimeter. It's pretty good plywood but it's not the best grade quality. That will be built, that is what I will build the boxes and the outer section for. On the front of the box chain, I will have this birch plywood that is so nice. That's real birch plywood that is used to build everything and that's what I use to build other boxes. On the back side and where I don't want any decent finish or need any decent finish, I'm going to use this OSB board. This one is very very cheap, it's like one third of the price compared to that one and one fifth of the price compared to that one. It's time for me to actually cut everything up and then we'll start attaching it together. Guys, this is basically everything needed to build this cabinet with the drawers and everything. Actually, it isn't. Because we need the fronts as well, handles, and something to have them to pull out and in, in and out. Almost everything. On the drawers I like, I will be ha using these handles here. They are pretty neat. But for them to fit, we need to make a hole. So basically in the front here, we will make, need to make a hole where this sit in two. And since I'm going to have an outer layer as well, we need to make this fit here. And to do that, I have a nice little trick. And we are going to use my CNC machine for that. The advantage here is that I have a CNC machine. So I can actually cut everything out as I want. So taking the handle that I decided to use here, and then I can cut the front part, the hole in that one, and this handle will fit precisely like that. 
But as you can see here, this also sticks out on the out bottom side. So I need to do this on both of the parts, both the front plate and the actual drawer. And luckily, I have this CNC machine here and a program on the computer. This computer has no network, so I can't really shoot the screen, so I'm using the video camera. But what I have done is basically to input the dimensions of this board and the thickness and everything. And the dimensions is from the paper that I wrote out earlier. Then I just took my caliper and measured the dimensions of this piece and make sure that I have tolerances for the 3D printed part. And by doing that I found out the width of this is 117.5 and the height is roughly 33.5. 33.5 split by 2 I get a radius of almost 16.5 actually 16.75 but this is close enough I apply this to the dimension and I get this form here and I go to the tool path itself and I basically choose this form here and make a pocket making the pocket I start at depth 0 so therefore I have cut depth of 13 so I get through it and in this case I'm actually using a 12 mm flute and I'm doing 5 mm at a time with the speed and I calculate it and it will complain that I go through the piece yada 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 I know about that close it and export the file and then I bring it into Mac 3 I'm using Mac 3 for all my CNC work either if it is from Aspire or Fusion 360 or whatever it is but this works really great for me in the right corner here you can actually see the tool path that I'm going to use so if we move the machine if you zoom in a little bit there I hope you can see this I can move the machine around and I can roughly see where it ends up and moving the machine around is pretty simple it's just with the keyboard When everything is done on the CNC machine, this is what I ended up with. And here you have this handle, and as you can see, it sticks out. And that one, depending on the size, you can see that I cut this just slightly below. And that one will fit just like that inside. And you can see that the bottom have this edge, and the reason for that is because the bottom part will fit exactly like that. Meanwhile, the top sticks up, and the reason for this to be sticking up is that you don't want all the boxes, because the boxes itself, as you can see, are this size. And if you have something that's sticking up here, that should not grab on the box. So now, when this is done, it's time to go back and sand every darn piece. And then it's time for assembling. Assembling the boxes are pretty easy. You have the front cover here, back, and you will need two sides. The front, as you can see, I put the up, up, 
because I want the bottom as flat as possible. So I start with this one. And I'm using glue, of course, uh, wood glue. And applying that on the side here. It goes pretty quick to do one side actually. Then I put it up again. And I'm using a nail gun here with 30 millimeter nails. And I make sure that this one is flush. And do three nails in each. Now take the next one. Make sure the top is flush. And watch your fingers when you're pressing up. I turn it around. The other side. So the top side here will be a little bit uneven, but that one is easy to smoothen out later on. Take the bottom, and I actually make the front side flush. Put it down, and then I take one corner in the front. 100% flush, driving a nail, then go over to the next one, driving a nail, and then I feel so all this front is okay. Then I go over to this corner here and make sure that it's flush all the way. Then I know that this 90 degree here is fine, as long as this bottom board is fine. And you won't have any problem later on. And then you just cross check so this one looks okay. And the nails will basically hold this together while drying up. One more box ready to go. A lot of ongoing noise, everything runs. So the drawers will be on this side, stacked all the way from bottom to top, almost. Because eight drawers here leaves me at least a couple of centimeters in the bottom. Um, but on the right side, I'm going to have these boxes here, 3D printed parts, birch plywood, of course, in the middle. And they will be sitting on top of each other, roughly like that. But I need to have something in between, and I found these aluminium pieces in the hardware store that will work just fine to have in between like that. I always want to have wood or plywood in between, but then I don't have enough height to do this. And they either have to stay on the floor, or I have to remove the top here. And I don't want it because I need it for rigidity. So what we know here is the height of this, and it is needing 42 and we have another 42 and a half up here. So we can mark out already now that this one shouldn't sit lower than that. I'll do the same on that side. 
Those here are cut out so they are exactly the length of the boxes. They will be sitting like that and I know that's the inside itself. So let's drill those out, countersink them, add them up. And the next part is to take this piece, glue it in, staple it in, and also this piece here, glue it and staple it in. And then we will go ahead and insert all the, the drawers itself. Okay, so doing the inserts here or the guide rails here are pretty simple even though it might seem complicated. So my boxes, I know that they are 99 millimeters in height, the total box height, the front that is. So that's because I want to have one millimeter in between each. So that's, then I know that 10 or 100 millimeter is the, the width of the top to the bottom here. And those guide rails that go inside here have the bottom right just here. So it's pretty easy to measure this up. On the first one, I know that those are 35, so I made a block that is 65. And inside here, I measured this one as well to make sure that I have the correct height. And I know this box should be 72 millimeter. That gives me the correct distance between the top and down here, and they are even. But, the complex thing is when you go to the second one. This one will remain the same, because they are even, but this one aren't, as you can see here. And the reason for that is because they go in here, on both the top and the bottom. So on this one, I did one that is 77 millimeter instead. And this one should kind of fit here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. And then, then it just a matter of continuing. So I'm going to add everyone up and going down now. I think it's time to actually move this out from here now and I'm going to rearrange this desk a little bit more than I thought because in the beginning I was planning on only adding one middle here but after looking I think I should add one all the way out perhaps but of course for this video we'll stick it to this one here but this is a bench that I'm going to replace first and you can see how wobbly it is it was a great thing when I bought, built it but nowadays it's just yeah, I don't use it properly. And you can see here, it's filled with things. So, 
I need to sort this out because I don't know what I have here. I have everything from springs to other things, so let's move this out. That should work really great, and of course I need to have the trim pieces on top. I'm getting ready here now. I like this layout. They're glued together. This front here is just press fitted in place right now. But I should be glued as well and you can use super glue or any other bonded bond glue itself. But I will leave it for now because they sit very flush. Next thing is actually to fill them up with all these kind of boxes that I printed. But having the boxes like this they will move all over the place. So what I have done is printed this. Every piece here takes roughly one hour to print on my, uh, my, my printers. And they're quite large and as you can see here there are quite a few of them. For each of these I will be needing four of these here. So every box takes four hours to print those and I have to have eight of them so that's just 32 hours to print all these nets and to attach the nets we are going to use super glue and just dab it on and then press them into place you need to make sure that you don't have any glue in the edges here so you actually can get them into it but this is just a matter of yeah working on And I'm just adding a little bit of super glue on each of the corners like that. And depending on how you've done it, you may have to use activator as well. When that's done, you can basically have this anywhere you want and they will stick put and that's the beauty of it they work flawlessly it's time to see if the drawer really fits inside here and if I did think everything right or not so let's insert them and then, then it's time to actually fill them up with 3D printed boxes and yes the first drawer is not black on the front I had to do a test. And the boxes to fill this up with are all, or almost all here. As you can see, there is many hours of 3D printing here. And thanks to Banggood, this was made possible. Because if I wouldn't have had a second printer, a fast second printer, this have not worked out as fast as I thought. Let's load all these boxes up and see how it looks.
this is it for this video. The first cabinet is done and I will of course make another one here. Though not 100% the same structure because I don't know what type of drawers I need yet. But almost the same I guess. If you want to have the design of this box here, the outer box, they are in the description. If you want to have or know where to find how to print these boxes or the handles, I will link in Alexander's YouTube place as well, including his shop where he actually sells the designs for these boxes. If you want to have tips and tricks on how to print this and how to build those kind of boxes and this kind of boxes with all everything that I have learned, you should subscribe and check out my next video regarding this. But for now, I'm pretty darn happy. I need to do a lot of sorting. I have started with some of the tools. And, I mean, tapes and stuff. And, and I have many more to fill here. Potentially, you can have 800 of those small. Or 200 of those inside here. So it is a lot of storage for sure. I would like to thank you for watching and if you haven't already subscribed to this channel do that and check out the links down below to the ones helping me out with this. Once again guys, thanks and I'll see you next time, bye.